Howdy and hello folks, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me MH4 and take a small moment right now and think about your favorite opening to a video game. Not your favorite video game, your favorite opening to a video game. Just close your eyes and picture it in your mind. You can, uh, <laughs> you can open your eyes now. It's vivid, right? You can very clearly picture the characters, the colors, the music. The opening to a video game is usually the first impression that it makes on you, and many times it can be one of the most memorable aspects of that game. If a game wants to grab you right out of the gate, it really needs to have an intro that hooks your attention and makes you want to explore the world of that game even more. Today I want to talk about some aspects that I believe make good video game openings, and namely I had three core aspects in mind. The music, the animation, and the iconography. Before we talk about though, I should clarify that by game opening, I mean the first thing that the player sees after they see all the legal information. Say a game runs on Unreal Engine 4 and has to put that logo before you get to anything in the game, Unreal Engine 4 logo isn't the game's opening. Additionally, if the opening cutscene only pops up after you've had to go through a bunch of menus, I'm not considering that the game's opening either. The first thing that the player sees is the opening and the first impression. So that's what we're going with for the sake of this video. With that clarification out of the way, let's start discussing the aspects that all add up to make a good video game opening. Music is probably one of the most important aspects in a game's opening. The music, or lack thereof, can make a huge impact on the player and really set the tone of the game as a whole. The Smash games place a super heavy emphasis on a single recurring theme, and in Brawl onwards, the opening is where that theme is first introduced to the player, so it better be a dang good rendition, and boy howdy does Brawl not disappoint. To keep things simple, I'd like to specifically discuss the opening to Brawl, as it leaves the largest impact on the player with its stunning Latin theme song. An argument can be made for N64's Toy Box, or Melee's unique animations, or Ultimate's Life Light, or Wii U's Clip Show, or 3DS's But this is my video and I get to pick the video games. And so I don't have to bring it up later, here's where I'd rank every Smash opening. Anyways, Brawl's opening starts off with two notes that pique your interest before exploding in your face with bombast and grandeur. And then the lyrics kick in... And everything makes sense. In that moment, watching these reused cutscenes and gameplay footage stitched together in time with the music, you feel blown away into another world, taking in these gorgeously sung lyrics about a warrior of legend, and in that moment, Brawl becomes a complete package. Then this part comes in... and you pee your pants a little. Because this composition is one of the best to ever grace the Smash franchise. And regardless of whether or not you like Brawl and its art style, gameplay, whatever, in this moment, the opening sells you on it. And your jaw is a gape. Now, let's move on to something a little less grand, but still very effective. Friday Night Funkin' is a game that lives and dies by its music, given its style first approach, and the opening track that fades in and sinks to the opening credits is a fantastic first impression. The song's perfect pacing pays off immediately when we get a punch of a cymbal crash, revealing the game's logo and one of its most important characters, both of which are bopping in sync with the music. It doubles as the menu theme, making you intimately familiar with each little detail of the repeating tune as you change your settings or decide what week to play. It's a great tune that never grows dull or irritating as you listen to it, making it a great choice for the first song you hear. And for my last pick of a great first song you hear... If you're patient and don't spam the A button like a normal person, Earthbound greets you with this haunting theme that alludes to the dark turns that this adventure will inevitably force you through. However, after this, the music swells into a triumphant, hopeful explosion of brass that leads effortlessly into a gameplay reel showcasing the weird and wonderful world you're about to discover, both visually and musically. The song that plays over this scene fades in and out, changes time signatures, and can be disorienting in some regards. 
However, this is much like the game itself, and the wide musical net cast by this opening brilliantly foreshadows the overall tone of the game and the unique musical identity that Earthbound carves out for itself, all packaged within two opening cutscenes that can be very easily skipped by accident. Earthbound won't force the player to take this information in, but it feels rewarding to the players that do. And now that we've established the importance of the music, let's move on to the animation. Opening cutscenes to games can be very versatile in their usage. Franchises like WarioWare have traditionally used their openers to give some exposition and introduce the player to characters and concepts they'll become more familiar with within the full game. To name a specific example, WarioWare DIY's opener shows the story behind the Super Maker Matic 21 and explains the game's central gimmick, game creation. This cutscene transitions smoothly into the title screen in an incredibly satisfying way. Another great example in the WarioWare series is WarioWare Gold, serving not only to showcase the series' newfound voice acting, <laughs> it's my gold. I love gold. Oh, this thing's heavy. but also to give exposition on the game's wild story. Hey, look here, it's a Wario. I'm hosting the greatest video game tournament of all time! Both game intros showcase their interpretations of the WarioWare art style very well in their own charming, limited ways. One way the Animal Crossing franchise has historically used its opening is to showcase a villager out and about, even before you create your save file. This simple showcase of peaceful gameplay footage sets the mood for the game you're about to dive into. A slow-paced, relaxing exploration of a new town filled with new people to meet. And while this isn't exactly an animation, it really is just gameplay footage with the game's main theme playing over it, it visually captures the spirit of Animal Crossing in a way a more traditional opening animation arguably couldn't. And to tie back to music for a moment, music and animation and game openings are made that much more effective when they're tied together well. To look back at a past example, the Smash Bros. Melee intro cuts its scenes to the tempo of the song, showcasing visuals that reflect the current mood of the tune. Additionally, the Friday Night Funkin' intro would not be nearly as effective if Girlfriend and the logo were not in sync with the music. Just look at older versions of the game that do make this mistake. It's not nearly as satisfying or mesmerizing to watch. On a Friday night yet. Going deeper into this musical connection to animation, there are many game openings that double as music videos for the game's main theme, with these games very typically being JRPGs. Games like Persona 3, Yokai Watch 2, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Dragon Quest XI feature very well-made animations that set the tone appropriately and utilize their music of choice to great effect, pumping you up for the game ahead. These cutscenes can also take different directions stylistically as well. For example, Persona 3 and Yokai Watch 2 focused more on artistic expression and flashy visuals, while Fire Emblem Three Houses and Dragon Quest XI focused more on exposition and plot foreshadowing. Now, visuals and music are essential to a good opening, but what good are those visuals and music if they're not memorable? The first time I booted up Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, I just sat there and basked in the opening title screen. The simple beauty of the franchise's most iconic weapon behind a gorgeous sky, combined with the gradually swelling orchestra and change from day to night, make this opening a remarkably memorable first impression. The unobtrusive placement of press any button allows you to just sit back and enjoy this lovely breath of fresh air before delving into a deep, arduous, and complex journey, making this elegantly unremarkable screen one of the most remarkable introductions to a game that I can think of. I was debating on if I should say this next game's opening is good or not, and I think I've settled it. The original Five Nights at Freddy's, while lacking in very interesting music and animation, has an incredibly iconic opening. The memorable jump scare disclaimer and the unnerving twitching Freddy head may just be a bit too simple for some, but I would argue that's the point. The opening is merely a very simple surface layer that hides the game within. It makes you uneasy, but not so uneasy that you're scared, just like the opening to Night 1. And then, the robots start moving. 
FNAF's opening menu screen, when paired in the context of the game itself, becomes this sort of calm before the storm that foreshadows the experience you're about to have without truly letting you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Last but certainly not least, take a look at the opening to almost every single Pokemon game. They all follow a very solid formula that's instantly recognizable. A cutscene that sets the tone of the adventure you're about to take, followed by a bombastic rendition of the franchise's main theme that lingers visually on the Pokemon that adorns the box art of the version you purchased. X and Y and Sun and Moon altered this formula by showing the box art Pokemon first and the cutscene only if you wait a while on the opening screen. While I would argue that these changes still make the impression that they need to, the cutscenes themselves are definitely weaker now than ever before, reusing gameplay footage and clips from cutscenes rather than being its own dedicated animated sequence. Some of the magic feels lost here, but it's not completely gone just yet. We'll get to that. Of course, there are good games that have bad openings. You know, a bad opening doesn't make a bad game, and vice versa. Take a look at Fortnite's opening during Chapter 2. That's awful! Today, it is still bad, but they've improved it a little. It's got music now! Similarly, take a look at the openings of the Picross S series. They're all the same boring thing. Song, title screen, press button to enter. For most games, you don't need anything more than this. Many openers utilize function over form to a T, with many games such as Shovel Knight, Doom, and Tower of Heaven utilizing similarly simple instructions. Some games like Super Mario Bros. don't even include music, they just spit you into a menu and say go! It is possible to stylize this type of opening though. ARMS does this simple opener with a bit more style, introducing us to its signature light motif and striking iconic yellow, but in the end, it's still the same thing. Song, title screen, press button to enter. This simplistic style of opener isn't necessarily bad, but it doesn't leave an incredible first impression and makes for a less memorable first experience with the game. The final bad opening I want to bring up is that of Pokemon Sword and Shield. I told you we'd get to it! Instead of the wonderful opening cutscenes of the past, the game decides instead to dump you into a soulless menu and to select some basic options. No music, no style or flair, just pick your language, skin tone and name and be gone. This monotony combined with the long, unskippable and lackluster exposition dump of a cutscene that follows gives you the impression that these Pokemon games are different than before, but not in a positive way. The opening is a boring slog that can be uninteresting at best and frustrating at worst, and it really spells out how important a game's opening moments can be in deciding how someone feels about the game as a whole. A game shouldn't get good, it should be good from the moment you boot it up. So now that we've established what makes a good opening and defined some solid examples of them, allow me to discuss some openings that, in my opinion, get everything right. These openings combine their music, animation, and iconography into a wonderful blend of style and passion that gets you excited for the game ahead while still being enjoyable in their own right. I think now would be a good time to address the elephant in the room. Persona 5 has arguably one of the best openings to a video game ever conceived. The song is instantly striking, and has you hooked with the first three notes, and the game's signature art style that everyone knows and loves is here in full force, slapping you in the face at Mach 10 with its gorgeous traditional animation and wonderfully restrained color palette. And just as fast as it came in, the opening ends. Persona 5's opening doesn't waste your time. It tickles your brain with a little over a minute and a half of expertly executed style and then throws you on the floor with the same three notes it grabbed you by the shirt collar with. Another example of an opening that does everything right is the Rivals of Ether opening. Already this game's composed by the one and only flashy goodness, so you know the opening thing is gonna absolutely shred. And shred it does, being a high octane rendition of the game's recurring theme a la Smash Bros. What this opening does better than most Smash games, however, is that it doesn't reuse animation or gameplay footage from other segments of the game. The opening to Rivals was gorgeously animated for the teaser trailer to the game's Definitive Edition, and smartly pixelated in-game to better fit the style of the rest of the experience. 
It also conveys the identity of the game incredibly well by showcasing not only the four elements theme through its characters, but by having each character use some of their most iconic moves, such as Orkane's teleport or Claren's energy field. Both Rivals and Persona 5 utilize the idea of show, not tell, very effectively by communicating the game's attitude and major themes in a short introductory scene that helps the player understand on their first watch what the game is all about. These openings operate both stylistically and practically, elevating them beyond their contemporaries into something special that you feel bad for skipping when you start the game. The introduction becomes part of the game's identity, an integral part of the experience, because that was what introduced you to that world in such a quick, effective, and elegant fashion. As I hope to have shown you today, making a good opening is much, much, much harder than it seems, and making a great one is even harder than that. Hopefully this video has given you a new appreciation for good openings in video games, and who knows, maybe even a new disdain for the bad ones. There are, of course, plenty of good openings that I didn't mention for the sake of time. You know, we've got your Super Metroids, your Undertales, your Cave Stories, your Kirby's Return to Dreamlands, the list goes on. Let me know in the comments what your favorite game opening is and why. You know, what makes it stand out in your head? Uh, is your favorite game opening from your favorite game or something else? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. My name's Christian Sasser. You probably didn't call me MH4, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Take a look at Fortnite's opening during Chapter 2. Oh!